Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Srila Prabhu Pada Jai Srila Prabhu Pada Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Madhava Ki Jai Shri Shri Pralana Shinga Dev Bhagavan Ki Jai Shri Shri Pancha Tattva Ki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 7, Chapter 15, Text 23 Om Agyana Timirandasya Gyana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukhakaroti Vachalam Pangoram Gayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Mande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Vancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Jaya Pataka Swami Niti Namine Nama Acharya Padaya Nitai Kripa Pradayine Gaura Kata Damadaya Nagara Gramatarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Anvikshikya Shoka Mohao Dhambam Mahad Upasaya Yogantarayan Maunena Himsam Kama Dhyanihaya Anvi Shikya Shoka Mohao Dhambam Mahad Upasaya Yogantarayan Maunena Himsam Kama Dhyanihaya Anvi Shikya Shoka Mohao Dhambam Mahad Upasaya Yoga Antarayan Maunena Himsam Kama Dhyanihaya
Vaishnavis, Himsam Kama Dani Haya Word by word translation if you like to repeat Anvikshikya By deliberation upon material And spiritual subject matters Shoka Lamentation Moha An illusion Dhambam, false pride. Mahat, a Vaishnava. Upasaya, by serving. Yoga antarayan, obstacles on the path of yoga. Maunena, by silence. Himsam, envy. Kamadi, for sense gratification. Anihaya. Without endeavor. Translation. By discussing spiritual knowledge, one can conquer lamentation and illusion. By serving a great devotee, one can become prideless. By keeping silent, one can avoid obstacles on the path of mystic yoga. And simply by stopping sense gratification, one can conquer envy. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. If one's son has died, one may certainly be affected by lamentation and illusion and cry for the dead son. But one may overcome lamentation and illusion by considering the verses of Bhagavad Gita. Jatasya hi dhruvo mrityur dhruvam janmam mrityasya cha As the soul transmigrates, one who has taken birth must give up the present body. And then he must certainly accept another body. This should not, this should be no cause for lamentation. Therefore, Lord Krishna says, Dhira statrana muhyati, one who is dhira, sober who is learned in philosophy and established in knowledge cannot be unhappy over the transmigration of the soul. If you like to repeat the translation, by discussing spiritual knowledge, one can conquer lamentation and illusion. By serving a great devotee, one can become prideless. By keeping silent, one can avoid obstacles on the path of mystic yoga. And simply by stopping sense gratification, one can conquer envy. Hare Krishna. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to speak some Krishna Katha on this very, very interesting verse. I seek your permission to share a few insights on this verse. So basically there are four parts. 
four main principles. And the first principle is that by discussing spiritual knowledge, one can conquer lamentation and illusion. The second is about how by serving a great devotee, we can become prideless. And then the third thing is about why it is important for a yogi, for a devotee, to be quiet or silent in order to avoid obstacles on the path of our devotional service. And by simply stopping sense gratification, we can actually conquer the greatest enemy, envy. So let's take the first point. Shoka mohao. Yes, it is actually very important for us to have that strong spiritual grounding so that we don't get lost into the miseries of this world. We don't get blown away by the kite of Dukkhalaya Mashashwatam. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with my mother and then she actually went through Srimad Bhagavatam. She studied Srimad Bhagavatam at least twice. She's going through it third time. So she was telling me, actually the world is just Shoka and Moha. That's all there is in this world. That's all there is in life if there was not Srimad Bhagavatam. And that's the truth. If we don't make active efforts in order to actually gain knowledge, if we don't do Nityam Bhagavata Seviya, if we don't, if we're not connected to the eternity, eternal principles of Srimad Bhagavatam, of the reality of life, then this illusion of the belief that we are this body and all the things that are happening to our body can cause us immeasurable misery and lamentation. Um, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is talking about if one's son has died, one may certainly be affected by lamentation and illusion, but one can overcome this lamentation when we study the scriptures. So the story, a famous story of Chitraketu is very, very relevant in this context. Chitraketu, you know how many wives he had? Do you know Chitraketu Maharaj, how many wives he had? He had 10 million wives. It is said, the Sanskrit, actually, I'm not 100% sure if it's literal 10 million, because it says Sahasranam Sahasreshu. So basically, thousands and thousands, 10 million wives. Why he had so many wives? Because he had a lamentation that he didn't have a progeny, he didn't have children. So he took one wife after another, one wife after another, and 10 million women couldn't give him a child. So there was lamentation, a lot of lamentation. And then he approached the sages and Angira Muni mercifully actually granted him this great benediction with a warning. Yes, you can have a child and the child's name will be Harsha Shoka. The child will bring happiness, Harsha, but he will also bring Shoka, lamentation. Then what happened when the Chitraketu Maharaj had this child, he apparently neglected all the other wives and gave more attention to this child and the mother. Then all the other queens became uh, absorbed in lamentation. So they thought we have to end this and they poisoned this little child in order to remove their lamentation. But you know, when we do something in order to remove material lamentation, we actually increase the problem. So then when the child died, then Chitraketu Maharaj and the wife became completely devastated. And then Narada Muni came. And then what happened? Narada Muni actually brought, brought this dead child back to life. Why? To give this knowledge. To help them understand to not become absorbed in this illusion and lamentation over a material concern. So what did the child say? When, when the child came back, this is what he said, because Narad Muni said, look, your father and mother are very, very much in grief, so please come back. So the child came back and he said, you know, this dead child is up, sitting there, and all the crying relatives, and then the child starts saying, according to the results of my fruitive activities, I, the living being, transmigrate from one body to another, sometimes going to the species of demigods, sometimes to the species of lower animals sometimes among the vegetables and sometimes to the human species. Therefore, he's asking Narada Muni, in which birth were these my father and mother? 
because nobody is my father and mother. How can I accept these two people as my father and mother? So this is what Srila Prabhupada is also bringing up in the purport. So after hearing these instructions from a child, then Chitraketu Maharaj and his wife, they could actually understand the main principle that all the relationships in this material world are subject to lamentation, are subject to that illusory attachment. Does it apply also to us devotees? Yes, if it is based on our bodily attachment. If we don't have Krishna in the center, definitely every relationship is a cause of misery and lamentation. In fact, we can see another example in Chaitanya Charitamrita. When Shiva's Thakur, actually I would like to sing those verses when this actually happened. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the house of Shiva's Pandit. Eka dine Shriva Sera Nandi Regosani Nityananda Sangin Ritya Karedui Bai. So one day, the two brothers, Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, right here in Shiva Sangan, they were ecstatically dancing. Shriva Saputre Ratanha Haila Para Loka Tabu Shriva Sera Chite Najamila Shoka. At that time, this big calamity took place that Shiva's Pandit's son passed away. But in the heart, the chitte, the heart of Shiva's Pandit, there was no lamentation. There was no shoka, which was there according when Chitraketu Maharaj's son passed away, there was lamentation. And then what happened? Then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was informed much later that this happened. Mrita putra mukhe kaila gnane rakatana apane dui bhai haila shrivasanandana. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this case, he saw that all the relatives were lamenting over this person's, this devotee's death. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this case, is just similar to the story of Chitraketu Maharaj's son Harsha Shoka. Narada Muni brought him back to life. Here Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought back to life the son of Shiva's Thakur. And what did Shiva's Thakur's son say? Because Mahaprabhu asked him, why did you leave the house of Shiva's Thakur? This is what Mahaprabhu asked. And the son replied, I was living in this house as long as I was destined to live here. Now that the time is over, I'm going elsewhere, according to your direction. I am your eternal servant, a dependent living being. I must act only according to your desire. Beyond your desire, I cannot do anything. I have no such power. So once all the relatives in the house heard to this transcendental knowledge, the reality, shelter of transcendental knowledge, if we can actually see Krishna as the cause of all the things that's happening, then we can overcome lamentation. Otherwise, we become again influenced by every little thing that's happening with us, every little thing that is conjugal lovers. When the same relationships are perversely reflected in this material world, we have relationships as the sons, fathers, friends, lovers, masters, or servants of others. But all these relationships are subject to termination within a definite period. If we revive our relationship with Krishna, however, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu, our eternal relationship will never break to cause us lamentation, to cause our lamentation. In fact, yesterday I was just reading how in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is giving a lot of importance to knowledge. He's actually saying different kinds of people approach me. And the one who's very, very important or dear to him is those with knowledge. In fact, it is said in the seventh chapter how somebody with the, who is, uh, whose intelligence is being conquered by illusion, they cannot surrender to Krishna. So actually, it is extremely important for us to 
do this nityam bhagavata seva every day connect with shrimad bhagavatam connect with the eternal principles so that whatever is happening around us we come back to our real source real source of shelter because that real source of shelter is what can really give us a strong identity right otherwise you know every problem we get blown away every disappointment every lamentation we think that is the center of life so it's very important to have that identity and talking about identity we can actually come to dambam so damba is very much connected with that aspect of the pride because um what is our real identity jivar swarup hai krishna nitya das this is our real identity eternal identity so when we are clear about this that i am a servant of krishna there is no space for us to think of ourselves our own pride our own false ego so here by serving a great devotee one can become prideless if our priorities becomes the center of our life then we become proud but if we can actually dedicate ourselves in the service of devotees who are prideless devotees who have conquered the heart of krishna then we can actually become prideless so i would like to share this relevant uh, pastime from chaitanya charitamrita again lord chaitanya mahaprabhu which with this story proves something about how we can actually please the lord by becoming prideless and how to become prideless Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was in Jagannath Puri he would visit Lord Jagannath every day so every day he would wash his lotus feet just outside the temple and there were these 20 steps after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has washed his feet the water would flow down from there and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very very strict so that nobody would take that water and he had govinda who was his secretary to guard anybody from taking this extraordinary mercy <laughs> it was extremely difficult lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was very 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 selective when it came to giving away his mahaprasadam remnants or the water that washed his feet one day just as this was happening and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was washing his feet there was one devotee who walked there and then he grabbed his hand and then he took the water from the feet of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu watched him do you know what he did he drank it and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu just was like and this devotee took his palms again he grasped grasp grasped again the water and then what he did and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu watched the third time he took his palm he took this transcendental water filled with ecstatic prema and he took it and then he drank it up and the fourth time he again <laughs> took his palm and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said that's enough <laughs> so govinda was watching all this and then he was wondering who is this devotee how is lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so merciful to him who is this devotee and later on what happened lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was taking his prasadam and this devotee who is he kalidas so kalidas was the same devotee who could take his palms grasp this liquid nectar flowing from lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's lotus feet and he drank thrice and he had this prasadam as this devotee kalidas was meditating on his deep desire to relish this mercy lord chaitanya mahaprabhu immediately paramatma himself he came to know this desire of kalidas so what did he do he told govinda go and give my pra- mahaprasadam to kalidas who is standing outside and govinda was again shocked how is this possible what's happening why is lord chaitanya mahaprabhu acting like this who is this devotee who is this devotee kalidas was such an extraordinary devotee he would go every day his main business was to get the mercy of vaishnavas he would go around 
different devotees houses in navadvip dham he would bring gifts he would bring prasad he would be very kind very nice to the devotees bringing them all sorts of mercy and what did he want he wanted to take the remnants of the devotees mahaprasadam and and when i was reading this story i was really amazed how a lot of the times he got it <laughs> because he was pleasing the devotees sometimes we have this attitude that we want to get the mercy of devotees we run around to touch the feet we run around to take grab their mahaprasadam we can learn from the story of kalidas character and personality that it's not only about just getting 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 it's also about serving so it seems kalidas got the mahaprasadam a lot of times and a lot of times not one time i heard pankajangiri prabhu he was in front of nishinga dev and there were these lot of visitors who were coming and they were wanting mercy 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 i mean this is i don't know years ago but it's it's stayed in my mind and he told the uh, yatris the pilgrims he said you have to also give not just take then he showed the hundi and he said you have to also offer something to the deities so this is the principle again before we start thinking okay right now we heard that this is the way for spiritual advancement which is chaitanya charitamrita confirms these three important things for advancement in krishna consciousness are first thing is the maha maha prasad of the devotees who have love for krishna in their hearts because when somebody has love for krishna in their hearts and then you take their maha prasadam you also get love of krishna but if somebody's heart is filled with kama somebody is a kami filled with material desire we take their uchishta or their remnants we get also that material desires so we have to be careful because when we're talking about navadvip dham lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's time all the devotees were in the siddhas right so there are two points i want to make as i continue further the story one thing is we need to have that attitude of service relationship with the devotees and then the rest follows is not just running around trying to grab mercy and we should therefore we should also give so it should be done with the right attitude so sometimes kalidas wouldn't get it easily i mean like for example jaru thakur jaru thakur was actually from an untouchable family but he was a great devotee of the lord so kalidas was determined to somehow or another get maha maha prasadam of jaru thakur it was quite a difficult task somehow or another one day he brought mangoes and they paid obeisances to each other and then jaru thakur said oh you have come to my house can i make some brahmanas cook for you can i offer you something and kalidas was like all oh, right it's okay no problem and afterwards when um jaru thakur wanted to send uh kalidas back to his place he walked a little bit further and then he came back as soon as jaru thakur came back to his house kalidas ran behind the house where he was waiting so that the mangoes that he had offered to jaru thakur would be eaten very soon and the peel of it would be thrown into the garbage one story there are so many principles there are so many elements by which is very practical which can be followed and then we can advance in krishna consciousness so i said the first thing to advance in krishna consciousness is the maha maha prasad the second thing is the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees vina mahat pad rajo abhishekam without the mercy without smearing the dust of the feet of the pure vaishnavas we cannot get pure bhakti and then the third thing is the water that washes the feet of vaishnavas when we can actually chaitanya charitamrita says we should um therefore set aside your shame and disgust and eat the vaishnavas remnants for by doing so you will be able to fulfill all your desires the remnants of krishna's food are called maha prasad but the remnants of the devotees are given the name maha maha prasad the dust of a devotee's feet the water that has washed his feet and the remnants of his food are three very powerful aids to spiritual practice 
All revealed scriptures loudly declare again and again that one can attain supreme goal of ecstatic love for Krishna through the use of these three substances. So please listen to me, for I insist on this point. Keep faith in these three substances and render service to them with complete faith. Just like Kalidas won the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This has been proved by the experience of Kalidas. Chaitanya Charitamrita 3.16.58-63. Again, I repeat, let's not jump into this in a sentimental way, but develop the relationship, have that faith in a specific Vaishnava who can give you that shelter, and also not to embarrass devotees too much doing this and causing them disturbance instead of serving them. Okay, the third point, let's go to the third point. It is the... By keeping silent, one can avoid the obstacles on the path of mystic yoga. Very, very, very important point. Being mauna, the mind can still think of negative things. So in this case, we should not talk about anything other than Krishna Kata. We should not do Gramya Kata. We should not do gossiping. We should not do talks that are frivolous, not favorable for our devotional service. Because when we get involved in gossip, we may not do it. We may be recipients of hearing them. What happens is our mind gets spoiled. The Shastras declare that controlling the tongue is one of the secrets of perfection in Kali Yuga. When thoughts don't generate karma, when our thoughts are not generating aparad, talking about others, then the masters in the movement. We can take the example of Shukadeva Goswami, Prahlad Maharaj, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just before that, basically useless talk is extremely detrimental for our devotional service. That I was thinking was Mrigari the hunter. He was so sinful. But still Narad Muni gave him mercy. You know what was the reason? He never offended devotees. He never actually did Gramya Katha. <laughs> he never gossiped. Jagai and Madai, they were very, very sinful. But they got the mercy of Lord Shaitanya Mahaprabhu because they never offended devotees. I mean, yeah, in the, in the sense of not doing Gramya Katha. So the point is, this is very, very important. I have a friend, very nice devotee, very sincere. And recently she was sharing with me how she feels her spiritual life is blocked because she's not in the association of devotees. She's been practicing Krishna consciousness since more than 15 years. Devotees, not necessarily in an offending way, just talking about devotees, talking about, they are not even Gaudiya Vaishnava, Iskon devotees, devotees in the community there in South India. She shared with me how that particular thing she feels has become detrimental for her to take initiation, to be in the association of devotees. So I, I, I really treasured that sharing very much. And I told myself, yeah, we shouldn't take things for granted. Sometimes we are amidst wonderful devotees. And because of this tendency to meditate on other people, their actions, we can actually get into big trouble by losing that association. And then it be life, Krishna consciousness becomes blocked, stuck. In Bhaktiya Loka, Bhaktivinod Thakur explains, actually even in Srimad Bhagavat, I don't have the Sanskrit here. Um, this is verse where Krishna is talking to Uddhava. And then he's actually explaining that uh, even, I mean, it says whether you're glorifying or offending devotees, both can actually cause you obstacles in the path of progress in, in spiritual life. That was a surprise for me. Really, even glorifying, even talking? Why? Because it may not be necessary. 
And in, in that, Bhakti Loka Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, we tend to do that in order to prove ourselves superior. Oh, this devotee is very nice, he did this, this, this. But in our mind, we think, I know that this devotee did this, this, this. So the point is, me knowing who. And then the fourth important point for today is the stopping sense gratification. One can conquer envy. Envy is also translated as himsa. Himsa means violence also. Himsa also means violence. Envy is violent. Why? Because as devotees, when we have feelings for each other, when we have good feelings, we feel it, right? And when we have bad feelings, also we can feel it, right? <laughs> so among devotees, if we want to progress as a movement, we need to have good feelings for each other. We need to wish well for each other. So there is no place for envy. Basic Krishna conscious rule. There is very good example of the opposites of the, the person who had envy. When we, when we are envious, then we cannot tolerate somebody else being happy. Person? No. It couldn't seem disgusting. <laughs> or when we are really in the mood of being compassionate, we think, oh, poor, poor person, he doesn't know that this is, first of all, abominable, and secondly, is even sinful. He doesn't know. So we're being compassionate. So the point is, if we don't have material desires, when we see other people enjoying material desires, we don't get disturbed by it. We don't get envious about it. But when we have a material desire, and then somebody else has it and we don't have it, then we become envious. That's why Srimad Bhagavatam says, no, no, kamadi means all these desires, all these material desires. We should give it up. Then we can give up envy. Duryodhana is a very good example. Okay? So, for Duryodhana, his sense pleasure was the goal. Me, mine. He was using Bhavan Bhishma Shakarnascha, Kripascha Samitinjayaha, Ashwatthama Vikarnascha, Samadatista Taivacha, Anye Chabahava Shura, Mother Te Chakta Jivitaha, Nana Shastra Praharanaha, Serve Yutta Vishara. The focus is me, my sense gratification. I want to win the throne, I want to get the crown, I use anybody and everything to get that. That's the Yodana's mentality. And his no respect for the guru or elders. No res I mean, we're talking about Bhishma, Drona. And he's just saying, they have come on the battlefield to give up their life. He's predicting they will all die. See? They will all die for my sake. But Yudhishthi Maharaj on the other side, completely opposite psychology, completely different personality. Bhishma Dev is on the bed of arrows and Yudhishthira Maharaj goes there you know wow moment of victory for Yudhishthira Maharaj isn't it if Duryodhana was in that place he would be celebrating Yudhishthira Maharaj was tears in his eyes he came to Bhishma Kime kandaiva tamloke kimba pekam parayanam stuvantah kam kam achanta prapna yurmana vashubham kodarma sarva dharmanam bhavata paramamatah Yudhishthira Maharaj's mood is all about dharma, all about compassion for other living entities. He's asking Bhishma, how can I benefit to humanity? See, see the opposite? Duryodhana is me, me, mine, mine. Yudhishthira Maharaj, how can I, all these living entities, how can I benefit them? How, what should they do in order to janma samsara bhandanath? All these people are... Whom should I worship? Whom should all the people worship? Whom should we chant the holy names of? How can we chant these holy names? How can we surrender? So, everything is contradictory to the Rodan. Such respect. Such curiosity to help others. Such sense of duty. He's not thinking, oh, now I won the crown. I don't have anything to do with this dead old man. He's going to die anyway. Haribo. <laughs> yeah. 
So the point is we all have the Duryodhana mentality and you have we have the Yudhishthir mentality. We just need to cultivate more the Yudhishthir mentality of being happy for other people's happiness. Practical tip. I tell you it, it is pleasurable. When we see some other devotee actually being happy, there is a higher pleasure than when we get it. Just have to like try it, experience it. Okay, we're running with time. So the, the fourth point, the summary is this self-centeredness will basically increase our sense gratification and so if we don't curb that sense, sense gratification, we cannot overcome envy. So the point is to reduce our needs, our wants, our desires, and serve our Guru's mission. Because we all have desires. We all want to accomplish something. We all want to enjoy a certain thing. And it's never ending. We'll keep coming back again and again. But if we can engage ourselves under the instruction of our spiritual master, please him, help him in his mission, then that's the path of overcoming sense gratification mentality. Just like Yudhishthir Maharaj did. He followed the advice of Krishna. And to do, I want the crown, I want the throne. I don't care who is going to die. So these are the four important points for today. Knowledge is extremely important. We can overcome all the daily lamentations, lively lamentations by knowledge by serving great devotees with humility with authenticity we can actually become prideless which will please krishna and by practicing comments or questions now is the time yes prabhu can we have the mic all the way in the back inspiration and <clears throat> we are living in community here in Mayapur and you know what I somehow can't hear clearly you don't hear me no I mean I, it's not clear it's not clear okay uh, as a newcomer in, in Mayapur uh, I have to learn to integrate myself in the community and um, although we see many faces since many years, but uh, I have difficulty to adapt myself with the mentality and to grasp the different uh, character of, of everyone. And uh, uh, although um, it takes some time, and sometimes uh, some are very. Uh, uh, how do you say, impersonal uh, relation, uh, they have impersonal relationship with newcomers. So, I don't, sometimes I feel a bit very sad, shall I have, because I see the community, when we go through the wall of the Farsiga, we can just break in the, and jump in at the lower suite of the, I speak about the Bengali community, deep of their heart, they have love between each other. You can see that Bengalis, devotees, they have love each other. They love really, they have, it's very deep in their life. And that sometimes uh, it's very difficult to break the wall of the, of the forest single. So I feel very sad and, and I lament in myself. So what is my attitude to have this feeling and of sadness and not to be envious also, but a little bit angry, of course, but disappointed. So, is it natural to be disappointed, to be sad, to feel um, not to have this relationship of welcome or the relationship of friendship? Be patient. And in the context of this particular verse, when you were speaking about this, what came to mind is this. The first thing is, we need to realize, all of us, that Krishna is the controller. Okay? In order to get wonderful Vaishnava association, 
It cannot be gotten by our own efforts. We cannot just say, hey, I'll go out today, check around, who can become my friend, who I can associate with, who will be like-minded. It doesn't work like that. We get Krishna through the mercy of devotees, and we get the association of devotees to the mercy of Krishna. So, this is extremely important point. At least this has been my realization. It also took me more than a decade to find like-minded association that I felt comfortable in. Okay? Just on a personal note. So what I'm saying is it's natural how you're feeling. And it's also a good desire that you have that you would like to find like-minded association. You would like to enjoy the association of devotees. But let's keep in mind that it's not for our enjoyment, but it is actually in order to glorify Krishna, in order to build faith in Krishna. And sometimes Krishna tests us, how much faith do you have in me? So if we can keep that faith, is about maybe you see some defects, some envy flying around and getting affected by that. A particular song comes to my mind that actually can also summarize this whole verse. And this is a song chanted by a Vaishnava Acharya called Purandara Dasa from South India. And he basically says, Kai meri hoda matike maruga baradu very very powerful instructions whatever is not in our control whatever is not in the grasp of our hand we should not lament for it be it finding the kind of association we want right now or be it not wanting a particular problem in our life but if we cannot control it don't lament at the same time, we should not be neglectful, careless, and say, oh, I want an association of devotees, but I don't find anybody, I give up. That, that's another extreme mentality of, oh, everybody here is not good enough for me. That is also um, not a helpful mentality. Then, in the, in the same song, he says, Savu novu galilla vendu tiliya baradu Deva nobba niruva nindu maraya baradu Savu novu basically means the shoka. We shouldn't think that now that we have become devotees all my problems will go away and I will find all happiness and always in the association of devotees all my desires will be fulfilled and I will have no problems whatsoever from today. Uh, he says, no, it doesn't work like that. He says, we should realize that in this material world there will be faults, there will be lamentation, there will be problems. That is the nature of this world. Like I told you in the beginning, my mother was saying, this is the world. Because we are in the hospital, we are all sick, so we are coming to the ISKCON institution to get cured. So we will find other people also who are sick, just like us. Right? So, what we need to do is be patient and Deva Nobba Niruva Nendu Maraya Baradu. This is my favorite, maybe perhaps the favorite line that I learned in my childhood. It says, Yes, the reality of this mundane world is Dukhalayam, Mashashwatam. This world is full of misery, there's no happiness, there's only pain. Yes, but there is a truth higher than that. And what is that? Deva Nobba Niruva Nendu. Don't forget that there is a Supreme Lord who is controlling everything. So, Whatever it is, is exactly as he wants. There's something for us to learn. There's something that Krishna is trying to tell us through a situation where we are frustrated. Even if we want, I want to chant purely, why I cannot? I want the association of devotees, why I cannot have Krishna? Right? These are all good. These are very good. It means that we want to progress. But we shouldn't give up because it's hard, because it's not happening. We shouldn't blame others. We should just be grateful. How many, I mean, how many devotees, like right now, devotees are watching in the internet, how many devotees have this great opportunity to be in Maya Pradam? Millions don't have. Right? So, the point is, we can go on counting our blessings, and then like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave mercy to Kalidas, 
suddenly one day because he being paramatma knew how the attitude of kalidas was he could he could go around and serve the devotees so one day he got the maha maha prasad of lord chaitanya one day he got the liquid nectar flowing from the lotus feet of lord chaitanya it will come one day just continue with the positivity try to find the devotees that inspire you motivate you and it's not easy and it's fine i hope this helps we will end the class here i'm sorry i went 5 minutes over shrimad bhagavatam ki shila prabhu pad ki the association of devotees ki arivo nitai go premanande